Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest Facebook Live. Today is June 20th, and hopefully you're having a great week. And I was trying to figure out, as Lily asked me what topic to pick for this week, I was trying to figure out what topic to pick. And I'm working on a talk, which actually, hopefully, I'm going to record today on large adrenal masses. I was at a conference, and, you know, we talk about, and the word large, I'm going to talk about better than 4CM. You know how we speak about adrenal lesions under 4CM? Most of them are adenomas, as incidental findings. We talk about washout values. But, you know, when we speak about washout values and stuff, we always talk about up to 4CM, that over 4CM, there are different rules. And so it got me to thinking, and we had a couple cases at the, our adrenal conference of larger masses as incidental findings in older patients. Obviously, conceptually, if you think about a large mass, you always perhaps are worried that uh, it's a tumor, right? And that's obviously the thing you're afraid of. Now, we've, there have been many articles published, and we've discussed them on CTSS before and some of our lectures, that if something is, un, if something is incidental, the likelihood in a patient who has no known cancer, it's going to be benign, okay? Very simple. And there's a couple different articles that show like 99% plus of but incidental lesions are benign. Now we do know that we pick up incidental lesions that aren't benign. You could pick up pheochromocytomas. Yes, I know most patients with pheos are hypertensive, but in our articles published from here and published from Mayo, it shows that as many cases or more are incidental findings of pheos and they weren't suspected. So you can have that. And of course, sometimes we picked up adrenal masses that are worrisome and then you find out the patient has an undiagnosed lung cancer, or we pick up every once in a while a big adrenal carcinoma, though invariably the patients are symptomatic. So I'll give you more detail in my lecture, but let me just come up with a couple points. Uh, and I'm looking to the left because I have my computer here. There was an article I found from Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic is wonderful at collecting big data sets. They looked at over many years, four patients with adrenal tumors that measure out of those, 705 were four centimeters or better. And they spoke about how the, there was a range of things, but the majority were indeed benign. Things that made things more likely to be malignant where they were larger, over seven centimeters, but again, we can see cis over seven cm. Higher unenhanced CT values that low density is low density, cis, adenomas, myelopomas, and patients who are symptomatic, okay? So and then they did a multivariate analysis, older age of diagnosis, male sex, non-incidental mode of discovery, larger size, higher non-contrast. So if someone presents with abdominal pain and you see a mass, you think more, could this be something bad? Could this be an adrenal carcinoma? But there are many different things. And so I think part of the point to make is that most of these lesions are going to be benign. And if you think about it, what things are there that are larger? So we see cysts, sometimes they're five to seven centimeters, water density sharply marginated. Next case. We see myelolipomas. They range from a few centimeters to eight, 10 centimeters. You worry with myelolipomas over five that they can potentially bleed. That can occur. Depends how much fat the lesion has. But you can recognize myelolipomas because of the fat content and the fact they often have punctate calcifications. And yes, you can argue perhaps that um, adrenal carcinoma could contain fat, but the adrenal carcinomas I've seen containing fat, they're aggressive tumors, markedly vascular, marked abnormal enhancement, looks malignant. And yes, you can see calcifications in adrenal carcinomas, but those are coarse calcifications, not the spotty punctate calcifications you typically associate with myelolipomas. You also can talk about some of the benign lesions, lymphangiomas or unusual tumors, and you also can talk about adenomas. We talk about adenomas for the washout value being below four, but we should recognize there are large adenomas as well. Sometimes they're a bit trickier, but, in, but you know, the fact is, most of them behave the same way. They're low density. And so even with larger lesions under 10 Hounsfield units um, on non-contrast, 
for sure the arterial, but non contrast, they're going to be benign as well. So I think that's something to really keep in mind. Now, when I give this lecture, I'm going to show some examples of monolite polymers, again, variable appearance. I'm going to show the cysts. I'm also going to comment on that every once in a while you have a hematoma, but hematomas are rarely, if ever, going to be asymptomatic. Now, I'm not talking about hematomas in a trauma patient. I'm talking about adrenal hemorrhage. Now, with adrenal hemorrhage, patients present with flank pain, often a abdominal pain, some symptom, but also they're typically on Coumadin or some other blood thinner. Sometimes they're really large, and then you worry about an underlying tumor. We've seen primary adrenal carcinomas. We've seen metastatic lung to adrenal present with spontaneous adrenal bleeds. And so you want to be careful. If you see an adrenal bleed and it's not a trauma patient, and it's not like a couple centimeters in round, and if the patient is not on Coumadin, then you have to be careful because I would say that I would dictate that I see a big mass, I see a bleed, but I would be concerned there's something underlying the bleed. And yes, certain benign tumors can potentially bleed, but when I see a bleed, I'm worrying about a malignancy, be it primary or metastatic. So that's something to really, uh, really think about. Now, in terms of large masses, the first thing you think about, of course, is adrenal carcinoma. Average size, 3 to 20 centimeters. Average may be probably 8 or 9 cm. The thing is, the small adrenal cancers, when you detect, are symptomatic. Number one, symptoms, Cushing's. There's a range of things where you can see a, a, a big adrenal mass. But um, the, the large ones are typically um, not going to be functioning. If they were functional, you would present earlier. So now you see a 10 centimeter mass. Now, how do I know that's malignant? Well, you can look at the lesion. And now, often with adrenal carcinoma, the large lesions, the patients present because of symptoms, flank pain, bone pain, shortness of breath, something else. So I have to admit, when we talk about the carcinomas, it's rare. I could think of a case where I picked up an adrenal carcinoma on a patient we were scanning for some nonspecific reason. Patients who have adrenal carcinomas usually are presenting with flank pain or back pain or some abnormal functions, be it liver or alphos or something like that. So I don't think from a perspective of that, you're going to say this is benign and blow it off. You're going to work it up um, and figure out what's going on. But I have seen, and people do report occasionally, carcinomas incidental. But then the enhancement, they're not homogeneous lesions. They're, they're irregular. They may control, contain dystrophic calcification or fat. They may be cystic. The margins may be irregular. They enhance. Remember, the more things enhance, now you've got to be thinking particularly regular enhancement, you've got to be thinking about a carcinoma. If things enhance and they're big and they're very bright, maybe they're cystic in the center, but very bright, then you're thinking of pheochromocytomas. 90% are non-malignant, 10% are malignant. But pheos can be big. And so in the differential, I do think of pheos, but I have to admit, the larger pheos are more likely going to be symptomatic. And to me, it's the vascularity. Yes, adrenal carcinomas can be very vascular, but they're typically not homogeneous vascular. Now, pheos are not always going to be homogeneous vascular. They could have central necrosis, but the fact is that there is a difference. And then if you see that vascularity, you'd be pursuing the thought of a pheo. You get lab values, and then you could see if the lab values are positive, then you could pursue that, and of course, carcinoma. Now, we will tell you, and... Uh, Jason Prescott, who runs the adrenal service here, surgery, makes the point that you do not want to biopsy adrenal lesions. Because if something's an adrenal carcinoma and you biopsy it, you can see the lesion. Adrenal carcinomas have high, uh, very poor outcomes. But the only way to really do it is if you think it's a carcinoma, that's when they don't do laparoscopic surgery. They do it open, and they need to remove the whole thing without ruining its capsule. If you biopsy it, you'll see the lesion. So you don't want to do biopsy. That's like a super no-no. And every once in a while, someone will dictate a report saying, adrenal lesion could be cancer advised biopsy. They will send a note back to me saying, no, 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 fix the report. You don't want to biopsy. If you think it's a carcinoma, 
it needs to come out, but it's going to come out in its entirety, and it's going to be an open procedure, not a laparoscopic procedure. That's a very, very important um, uh, differentiator between the two. And if you look at the cases, when you look at my lecture I'm looking right now, of course, is the lesions really look aggressive when they're primary carcinoma. Now you can say what else? Well, another tumor that can be very large is lymphoma. But usually lymphoma involves multiple organs. Occasionally it does involve adrenal only, but then they're very large and they're kind of adrenal shape, but it's bilateral almost always and huge. And even when it's unilateral, it's huge and it's infiltrating. It does not look like a benign process. And again, most cases, B cell, they also have nodes or other areas of involvement. So it's not that difficult. We talk about metastasis. Now, that means the patient has a history of a lung cancer, a melanoma, hepatoma. So then when you see a big lesion, you know, you're really suspicious that it's a malignancy. And you may have had prior studies as well to look for change. I think one point to make is not every lesion in a patient who has a known malignancy is, is metastatic, but you need to be thinking about it. And so remember this incidental four centimeter or greater mass discussion is really for people who don't have a known tumor because with a known tumor, things change. Now, the truth is metastases do have an enhancement. Uh, renal cell, they're very vascular. Uh, lung cancer, variable vascularity, colon cancer, variable vascularity, but it's not homogeneous. And when you start seeing non-homogeneous enhancement, a regular enhancement, then you've got to be thinking about malignancy. So that indeed becomes very, very important. I mentioned theos, very vascular, can be very large, usually 6 to 9 cm. They can be centrally necrotic, but typically vascular. The thing about theos also, again, the history, but not always. Theos can look unusual and be cystic, but I have to admit the cystic theos look irregular. So you're not going to take a, take a cystic theo and say, oh, this is simply an adrenal cyst. Um, this article by Mayo does make the point, I'm going to read this to you. We suggest that clinical context, hormonal assessment, and image phenotype can better determine the need for adrenalectomy in patients with adrenal tumors of at least 4 cm in diameter. Patients with large adrenal tumors should be managed by an expert multidisciplinary team, including endocrinologists, radiologists, and adrenal surgeons. And that's probably a good advice. With adrenal, you get a chance to do it once right. If your team doesn't have a lot of experience, if your surgeons don't really do a lot of adrenal work, then it probably ref pays to refer them to a tertiary center where people are doing a lot. Now, let me uh, move to questions. It's a good time to have questions. So, Kashul Kumar, hello, and Jiri Bezek from the Czech Republic, hello. You, Scott, amongst 2,005 patients in whom adrenal incidentalomas were detected, carcinoma was found in 4.7% and metastatic in 2.5%. Yeah, and, and that's true. You will be, um, remember, it depends on the population. Um, adrenal carcinoma is really rare. So the thought that that's an incidental finding, you see only a few cases at Hopkins a year. The number of adenomas we see dwarfs it by a hundred or a thousand fold. So um, adrenal carcinoma is really a rare tumor, 0.07% of tumors. Mets, you have a history. But again, even in that article, and I don't know the details of the article, it's showing that 93% of lesions were benign. Okay, Fernando, do you suggest in your report adrenal hyperplasia in a slightly thickened nodular adrenal or adrenal insufficiency? So if the adrenals look funny to me, if they look nodular and thick, you might talk about ad adrenal uh, nodular hyperplasia. If they look thick, I will say the adrenals look thick and clinical correlation is advised. If the adrenals are very thin, now I look at adrenals enhancement, remember we mentioned if patients have hemorrhage, or rather patients are hypotensive, the adrenals are very bright and thin. If I just see thin adrenals, I will comment that say the adrenals are thin. Um, is, is, does this patient have any hormonal abnormalities? I'll at least raise the question. I'm not going to say as well, or you could say, let's say small adrenals are associated with Addison's disease. I won't quite put it that way. I'll kind of mention that perhaps you should at least make that consideration, look at that possibility. 
Um, and Addisonian crisis, non-function adrenals, we speak about that in hemorrhage, but you can speak of that, about that with adrenal atrophy. So it may not be something that's uh, unrealistic to mention. I think one of the things that's very important in your institution is really dealing very carefully with the endocrinologist. <coughs> Excuse me. Usually there's somebody who really focuses on the adrenal is really good. We have that at Hopkins who's really good at looking at patients because often the adrenal patients don't come in as adenomas or carcinomas or pheos. They come in with some symptoms and some imaging studies. And it's very hard where to put the patient and should they be managed medically or should they be managed surgically? Sometimes it's very obvious, but other times it's not that obvious. So uh, really working with really quality people in that regard becomes very, very helpful as well. So let's see, uh, any other questions? I guess I'm at 16 minutes, so that's probably using up my time. So I'll just leave it at this point. If you have any other questions, just ask me. And I am going to record uh, a couple lectures today, hopefully, on adrenal masses, large adrenal masses. And that will be put up the end of July, beginning of August. So if you don't ask something now, you're going to have to wait five or six weeks to be able to see it. But with that, I hope you have a great day. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.